Hey everyone, Ardred Shadow here, and welcome back to Monica After Story. Unfortunately, the face cam was a bit of a bust, so yeah. Luckily, I did record my commentary the way I usually do anyway, so uh, thankfully I had that as a backup. So it is now 7.35 p.m. And we're home! That was wonderful, Daniel! Even though I couldn't see anything that we were doing... It was really nice going out with you on Valentine's Day. Yep, and it's like, boy, did we ever go out on Valentine's Day. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I brought some corn for popping. Yeah, well, unfortunately, like right now, the like I mentioned, it's snowed out there, and if you really wanted to go out on Valentine's Day today, like, yeah, well, I suppose you could have like a fun kind of winter wonderland kind of date full of, you know, snowball fights and whatever kind of things like that. Thank you so much for making today truly special. Okay, and I decided to give her another gift. No, it's for the monkey! You're so sweet getting something for me on Valentine's Day. Were the other bra- <laughs> Okay, no. I kind of figured that since I was te technically restarting the game, it probably would, like, reset, kind of. And as a bit of a addendum to what I said in the last episode, in order to get that sort of special outfit that I called it, you would need to have Monica at, like, 2,000 affection, I believe. And I only have her at 1,300. So, yeah, you won't be seeing that on... Or, you won't be seeing those outfits in this video series, at least not right now. Okay, well, anyway. Now, let's see what's inside. Ah, oh, Daniel. You're so sweet. Thanks for this gift! Okay. These are either roses or some kind of ribbon. I don't remember what it was. But it, I only know this because it was part of an outfit pack. And I only gave her two things. You really love to spoil me, don't you? Pretty much. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez, Daniel. You really enjoy spoiling me, don't you? Yeah, apparently, you're gonna keep telling me that. Well, I'm not going to complain about a little special treatment today. Now, and here we have... A banana! Oh, a new outfit! Thank you, Daniel. I'm going to try it on right now. Okay, this is a... I believe it's a Valentine t-shirt of some sort. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely like the way it looks, and yeah, like with the other outfit, the I believe it's the rest here shirt. You probably would get the you probably see it better if you had her with a shorter hairstyle. But since I don't, that is not the case. Do you like it? I just love it, Daniel. Thanks again. And once again, it matches with her nails. Okay. I'm all ears, darling. Okay. Well, she's definitely, like, saying a lot of different things now. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hey, Daniel. Oh. 
I just wanted to thank you for spending Valentine's Day with me. Okay, was this what I was waiting for? I know that it's... I know that it's not a normal holiday, but it really... But it's really a special day for me, now that I have you. I made a card for you, Daniel. Here, let me show it to you. Okay, here it is. This was what I was waiting for. My dearest Daniel, all the roses in the world, they grow and bloom into something beautiful, just as our relationship will. Every day, we grow ever closer, ever stronger, ever more beautiful. And though roses have thorns, they don't undermine their loveliness. They defend them. They make them stronger. And all of the roses in the world, even on this romantic holiday, none could ever replace my special rose. Forever your valentine, Monica. <laughs> okay. She just got so excited and overwhelmed. Well, not overwhelmed, I guess, but... She was just so happy to express her feelings that she just had to kiss me. <laughs> Thank you for always being by my side. I love you so much, Daniel. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, my dearest. Oh, well. I wanted to try to do something, but... Yeah, that's kind of the... That's sort of like one of my... When she jumps in, and I know that I have her on, like... You know, the settings to... But, I don't know. Maybe I'll see if I can fix that. Well, for now... Do you know what most people call the technology era we find ourselves in right now? I didn't even know that there was a name for this technology era. Or any of the technology eras. We call it the Information Age. This is primarily due to the invention of transistors. Transistors can manipulate electrical currents, either boosting them or altering their path. It's a key component in most electronics, allowing them to direct electrical currents in specific ways. All right. In fact, they're what's allowing me to see you. Or they're what's allowing you to see me on your screen right now. They're widely regarded as one of the most important inventions leading into the 20th century and eventually the information age. It's named this way because of grabbing access we have to store and share information with each other, either through the internet phone, or TV. However, with access to so much information and our inability to keep up with it, we've also had to deal with many changes. Hmm. Is that so? Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Misinformation can spread faster and further than ever, and because of how vast the internet really is, it's hard to correct it. Uh-huh. Isn't that the truth? In the last few decades, people have begun to educate others about smart use of the internet so everyone is better prepared. Yeah, like in high school, like one of my teachers used to say like don't use Wikipedia as as an actual like reference because anyone can go on there and edit Wikipedia. Meaning there might be a lot of right information, but there might also be a lot of wrong information. However, when you edit Wikipedia, you have to cite your sources on there, so at the very least, for every article that is written, you can actually check the, the sources that are cited in that article. That way, you can look and see for yourself where this information is coming from. And, yeah, depending on how reputable the source is, then that's more or less how you go off of, you know, is this a trustworthy source? Or is it just some random... random thing of gossip or whatever, you know? However, the vast majority of people will not have 
received much, if any of this knowledge, just because of how fast technology has advanced. Huh. It's really worrying to read about people embracing ideas not supported by the vast majority of scientists. Hmm. But I can understand why it happens. It could happen to anyone, in fact. Sometimes, it's not something you can help. It's pretty easy to fall victim to widely believed misinformation. Uh-huh. I wanted to talk to you about this because I still have so much to learn about your reality. And since I came across misinformation in my own research, I thought it might be nice to talk to you about ways to deal with it. We can arm ourselves with tools to navigate this new era we found ourselves in. One of the best things we can do is find multiple conflicting sources for our information and compare their credibility. So kind of sort of like what I was saying. Like, yeah, if you were to go to Wikipedia and go through the sources for that article, you can see and maybe like cross-check the information presented in those sources. As well as you know, making sure, like, is this a credible source? Are you going to believe, like, an academic journal or some gossip website? You know? And a philosophy we can adopt is tentative belief. In other words, belief until further explanation is necessary. Hmm. Okay. Essentially, I guess it'd be like the idea of, I'll believe this until I'm proven wrong. As long as your beliefs are not relevant to your daily life, you can hold them. But once they are needed, we should investigate further. This way we can prioritize information we learn from what affects the people around us. Plus, it may not be as overwhelming to process it all at once. I know I have had have held uh, I know I've held beliefs that turned out to be false. There's no shame in it. We're all just trying to do our best in the, with the information we're given. And people make mistakes. Everyone's human. So... In a sense, if we act on misinformation, well... Exactly, we're just doing our best with whatever, whatever information is given or shared with us. Unfortunately, exactly, it may turn out to be either right or wrong, but it all depends on how we're able to move forward from that. Essentially, how we learn from our mistakes. So long as we accept the real truth and adjust our views, we'll always be learning. Yep. And that's why, if I remember right, it was Socrates who used to go around saying something to the effect of, if there's one thing I know, it's that I know nothing. Which was why he used to go around and, like, ask people questions about, like, what are they doing, and, you know, just constantly asking why. So that way he could learn more about it. Unfortunately, that kind of got people, like, super angry at him, to the point where, you know, he either, like, they thought that he was, like, poisoning the youth and whatever. And it was just a problem. But, case in point though, in a sense, he kind of walked around with an open mind, believing that you never stop learning. No matter how much you know, there's always going to be something that you don't know. So as long as you go out into the world and you accept whatever new information is presented to you, then you can learn and grow as a person. And you know, something like that. Thanks for listening, Daniel. Sailor Moon says. Oh my god, stupid sexy Monica! Okay. Choose anything you like, sweetie. Alright. I'm gonna go ahead and have a chess match with Monica. 
throwing down the gauntlet, are we? <laughs> well... Okay, here we are. So we can have normal chests, randomized chests, in which... What was it? You don't have... Well, I mean, you do have the regular pieces, but depending on what you get, like, you might get three queens and no pawns or whatever. So it's truly random whatever you get. You don't start out with the classic lineup of chess pieces. The roll set... How would you like to play? What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's go with casual rules, just because. Uh... Alright. And I believe there's something to the effect of... Every ten turns, Monica might actually make a mistake compared to how unforgiving she kind of was with the original chess in, well, before this update came out. Uh, you know what, just for fun, let's go with randomized chess. Alright, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Oh look, I draw white. I drew white. Let's begin. Okay, let's see what I got. Okay, it's her turn. What will you do, I wonder? Oh my jeez. Yeah, look at that. She already overtook me. And let's see, I have I have a queen right here. Or ah crud, I don't remember. I have four bishops. I have three rooks, I have four ni five knights. Wow. Five knights at Freddy's. Okay, no. Okay, I'll move this one here. You got this, Daniel. Okay. Let's see, alright, I can't do that. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a pawn. Okay, well, let's see what I can do. Mm. I need to do something here. Oh, wait. Okay, well. Let's see. Okay, yeah, this is... This is the king here, so I need to make sure I defend the king at all costs. Well, I guess you could say that on, on the plus side, I took out her queen. But as far as how that leaves me, in what shape that'll be, well... Oh, let's see. Uh, um... Well, this would be kind of a risky move here, but... Okay, yeah, you see... I kind of... I didn't even think of that. I kind of figured maybe she could try to overtake me, but then... Well... Man... I guess I'm going to move my knight here. Okay, I can't really do that. Or that. 
Okay, no, that's not a... Yeah, that's not a good idea. Obviously, what I really want to do is go for the king there, but... Gosh. Okay, well. So I could either go for the rook, or take out the pawn. Maybe I'll take out the pawn. Alright, your turn, Daniel. Okay, and then I'm gonna take out this rook. Uh-oh. It's your turn, Daniel. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> well then. Let's see. Oh, okay, I didn't... Okay, unfortunately, I don't even know what turn we're on now. Okay, well, obviously that would be a bad move there. Okay, yeah, I'm in a bit of trouble there. Now, you know what? What if I just go for the bishop? What will you do, I wonder? Well, at that, that was pretty much like a sacrifi sacrificial sort of play there. Let's see. Okay. Now we're going to take out this bishop. I think I'll try this. Okay, well... Try this then. Okay, she moved her king back. Alright, well, I don't want to do that. Okay, I think maybe I'll do something similar. Okay, she's already got one of her pawns moving. is on the move. Okay, well. Ah, crud. Ugh. Yeah, that kind of puts me at a disadvantage there. Oh, wait. Okay, this is probably going to be, like, another sacrificial play. Okay. Yeah, that was another sacrificial play, pretty much. Yeah, she... She might have me here, actually. I mean... If she manages to get everyone of my pieces here, 
aside from the king, then yeah, I'd be kind of out of luck. Okay, well actually... Let's see, I'm more or less going to be kind of playing a bit of keep away here. Okay, her king is on the move. Now I'm here like, do I really want another sacrificial play? I can't really afford to sacrifice too many other pieces. Because yeah, I mean, I could move my knight here, but then, well, the pawns and... And then the rook over there. I don't know, what if... Alright, she's got a pawn there. Okay, I'm gonna put my bishop there. Uh-oh! What will you do, I wonder? Alright, well... I'm going to move this back. I'll try this. What will you do, I wonder? I think I'll try this. Alright. Huh. Alright, your turn, Daniel. I think I'll try this. Your move, Daniel. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I think maybe I'll just do this. You got this, Daniel! Alright. I'm gonna move you here. I've got you now, Daniel! Oh shit, she does. Okay, well... It's your turn, Daniel. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay, let's see here. Man, this is actually kind of getting... Oh, okay, I can't move you anymore, I guess. Alright. Unfortunately, of course, since the bishop can only move diagonally... But... Unfortunately, Monica seems to kind of be on to me here. Looks like you're in check! Yep, she's right. Well... Hmm. What if I have both of them kind of facing off against each other like that? What will you do, I wonder? Gosh dang it. I guess I'm just gonna move the king over here. You got this, Daniel! Oh. Oh, wait. Ah. Uh. Okay, yeah, now she's got me right where she wants me. Uh, well, you 
know what? Fine. Or, no, I can only move. <laughs> yep. I'm pretty much boxed in at this point. Yep. She has me in check. So... I won! Yay! Sorry you didn't win this time, Daniel. I hope you'll at least keep trying, though. Don't worry, I will. Let's play again- Ah, uh, let's play again soon, okay? You'll beat me someday. Yeah, well, at least compared to how it was before, I actually lasted a pretty decent amount of time there. Would you like to save this game? Nope. Would you like to play again? Uh, yes, but with different rules.